morning, welcome back to the channel. This is Mark from Apprentice One to One and PowerSonic. I'm introducing this like I might release it as a, as a video on YouTube, but I probably won't. It's um, it's more of a vlog for me because it's my last day in my 30s today. So I'm 40 tomorrow. <laughs> so it's 15th of February today and um, yeah, I've got a, a, a busy one actually. Got some EICRs we need to work through. Um, I feel like my my business is back on its feet because we've had um, staff isolating uh, due to contact with them um, or working in households with people who had a positive test. Um, so yeah, we've got everyone back out now and it, it feels like I'm not chasing my own tail quite so much. But yeah, last day in my 30s. Um, it hadn't really bothered me actually for, for the lead up to all of this. I've had kind of the family in my ear for a few weeks now. Um, my little girl's really excited that it's actually my birthday. She doesn't care how old I am. She just thinks it's brilliant that we're, we're having a little birthday party and um, yeah, she's, she's bouncing off the walls with it. Some of my older children are telling me how that's the that's the peak of the hill reach now and it's a fast decline to death um, in the next few years. So that's really positive and encouraging of them, you know, fantastic. When your family are like that, who needs enemies, eh? So, <laughs> so there is there is that going on, you know, it's, it, it's good banter and um, yeah, I take it in the spirit it's intended, at least I hope that's how it's intended. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really sure if it, if it had even bother me it's just another day isn't it to be honest so i'll wake up tomorrow just the same as i woke up today or at least i hope i will um but yeah i know there's 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 a lot of people in in the trades who worry about their age because when you're doing physical hard work um there's only so much your body can give isn't there uh so you know it's how how long have i got left doing all of this out on site because i don't enjoy the management side of things the office side of stuff i like to be out doing the actual work and it's good to see that there's still some older folk out there doing it. Um, you know, it gives a bit of hope that it's possible. Maybe I need to get myself in a bit better shape so I can keep keep going with it. Um, maybe have another 20 years if I'm lucky. <sighs> we'll see. We'll see. But anyway, today it is um, an EICR first. I won't be able to shoot any video footage because I don't have permission. Uh, it's a, a letting agent we're working for and they've made the arrangements with a tenant. So too many parties involved to try and get permission but if there's any interesting faults that come up I'll, I'll shoot some pictures um, just of the accessories or, or equipment that's damaged and we can maybe have a go at doing some codes. Busy day myself today I've got the YouTube live tonight after all the competitions we did with Apprentice One to One through the course of last week um, so again I don't know quite when I'm going to release this I'll probably leave it a bit of time because I think we've had a bit of um, overexposure through the course of Apprentice One to One's efforts with National Apprenticeship Week um, you know that it's a, it's a, in hindsight, it's a hard one for people because there's only so much content you can consume and chucking the four things out like that all at once um, with four different competitions maybe wasn't the smartest move. But then we're, we're not marketing social media experts. We're just trying to help um, help in our small little way by passing on some equipment into apprentices' hands. And uh, yeah, there's been a good number of views across the four episodes on YouTube. I think it's cleared a 1,000, which I'm sure to... A lot of the YouTube famous people is, is really bad, but to me, I'm quite pleased with that. That's pretty good. And the listening numbers on um, podcasting platforms as well, really good, actually. So thanks to everyone who has gone over and, and checked them out and, and entered. Um, and I shall announce those winners on a YouTube Live, which I'm still not entirely sure how you can do. I tried to set it up on my phone last night, and it politely told me that I'm not YouTube famous enough to have that feature. So you can only do it on a, on a um, laptop or desktop, so I need to get that set up. I've been told I've got to stay away from home this evening. I normally record Monday Club in um, my shed, as you'll all know, for those of you who tune into that over on the Electricians podcast with Sam, Nick and Amy. Um, but yes, I'm not allowed in there. So I can't record Monday Club in the shed. I'm having to do it from work where the Wi-Fi is horrific. So I'm going to have to try and get something set up with a hotspot, I think, um, so I can stream the video reliably and I also can't I was gonna on the live video with YouTube show the actual ZS value on my shed sockets to prove that the reading that was taken I've realized I haven't recorded myself taking it and I'm not going to be able to show it live because I can't be there so people are just gonna have to take my word for it and we'll maybe release a video later on to show that I wasn't just making it up <sighs> so yeah I've got my my microwave meal with me um, I can uh, 
have that and record Monday Club later and tidy up the office, I suppose. I'll be able to go back home after that all finishes about half past nine. Uh, you know, so I, I presume they're planning some sort of, some, maybe some sort of party in my shed, just for the, the six of us who live there, obviously. Unless it's some big, like, ruse and there's just nothing in there. They're making out that there is and really it's just, you know, my shed how it always is and I could have been sat in there doing Monday Club and they just want me to think they're up to something. That'd be disappointing. <laughs> anyway, I'll go and get on with doing the CICR and um, I'll drop some pictures up and we'll maybe have a talk through them uh, later on in the video. I might jump on throughout the course of this day and record a bit more on the old vlog as well. Um, see how things are, are progressing and if this ever makes it onto YouTube, who knows. But if it does, thank you for watching so far and um, enjoy the rest of the video. Hi, welcome back. It's Mark and I'm now at the office. I'm getting set to do a bit of tidying up because I've not been keeping on top of this very well while we've been um, short-staffed the last uh, week or two. Before I get into talk about the EICR I've just been on with, I wanted to run through a few tools we've got and thanks to uh, Tools Down and Dan because he sent us in some bits and pieces. So we've got these Fluke drivers. Never seen these before and uh, until they turned up in a random box, so that was nice. We've got a couple of the large flatheads and a couple of the Phillips ones. They feel really nice, actually. I like I like them. They've got, it's like a, a softer, rubberized handle. They've got a nice feel to them, and um, they're the slimmed down insulation on them. So when you're using your screwdriver for something you shouldn't, it's less likely to strip it off. Not that you should be doing that with VDE drivers, but a lot of people do. <clears throat> myself included from time to time when you're frustrated in something and you're trying to get it done. It's also sent a Cal card. Uh, Wills Electric's covered these if you haven't. Um, go and check out his channel. He was talking about them the other day. And these are brilliant for just making sure your meat is uh, measuring as you would expect. It's a, it's a nice little thing to be doing on a regular basis between calibrations. So I like those. Uh, one of my little tips, this is a screw fix special for the removable GU10 lamps. So these is getting your lamps in and out. Fantastic tool, especially when you've got big fat hands like me trying to get stupid little GU tens into light fittings. These are brilliant. Um, you, you just like with a, a phone holder in your car, same principle. Sucks onto the lamp. You can insert it and twist it in, and it's a, a nice, easy 10-second job instead of a two-minute piss around throwing lights about the place and lamps all over the floor when you get annoyed like I um, often do. And then there's this from Weha. So these are the adjustable. Um, grips and you'll see there they've got a little red release catch so you can adjust the size and once you set it that's it it doesn't slip out so that's it stuck um, and people don't like using these on glands and they always prefer to use spanners but you know when you can set them to a size like that and they're not going to slip and uh, make a mess you know that's, that's a good solution to that problem and uh, yeah they come in handy for sure and then one of my new favorite things is these Armeg magnetic bits. So a few people have shown these on social media over the last few months. They've been out a while now. We've had them for quite some time and Matthew raves about them. But you, um, you're you not going to get a screw off the end of there once it's on. Um, I've used the magnetising bits before. I've got a Makita one that works very well actually, but nothing like this. Once the screw's on, that's it. You're not, you're not even going to shake the thing off if you was trying to. Um, you know, they're fantastic. So well worth, well worth looking into them if you've not seen them before. But getting back to the EIC I've just done, it was a little bit of an interesting one and uh, for a couple of couple of reasons. Firstly, the earthing arrangement, it was set up as a TNS, but I know the house next door is TNCS and I'll pop a picture up of the two earthing arrangements so you can see. So the one, the property I was in today was TNS and that, that'll be up there and then the one next door is TNCS. So it shows how the arrangements from house to house down the same um, supply run can be different. Um, you know, so that's an interesting one. And again, I'll show the measurements for ZE and the PSC, so you can see the difference um, that I was that I was measuring. If there is a difference, and if it is actually a, a TNS arrangement, I mean, you can see at the point where it comes into the origin. But you know, just because it looks like that doesn't necessarily mean that's what you've actually got. Uh, so there's that one, and uh, yeah, the consumer unit was under the stairs. It's a plastic board. Some of the holes in the top were beyond the allowable um, sizes, so uh, as a little exercise, what would you code that? And again, I'll pop the pictures up there. It'd be nice to see a few people joining in, so if you are watching, have a go at it. There's uh, no one going to be criticising you for getting it wrong or supposedly getting it wrong. It's all open to engineering judgement 
an opinion and um, yeah we can all have a little go at that one me myself in the report and I will um, show you that in a later video so we can see what I decided all these things were uh, again there was uh, a light upstairs in a bathroom where the fuse spare wasn't sat flush back to its, its um, back box uh, we sorted that at the time of testing because we were taking it out anyway to get some measurements so we just tidied it up and put it back but if you were to code that what would you code it um, again the earth block was actually loose from the wall at the main intake so what which cause that code that wasn't actually fixed so essentially the earth connections just whapping around in free air and again I'll pop a picture for that somewhere up here so you can see it uh, there was an MCB in the board that had quite a number of conductors into it so there was a it was a B32 there was a ring final circuit and then three spares um, none of them were spares off spares so they were just going to um, a single double or single socket um, one was for the fridge and freezer, which was a metal clad, uh, sorry, metal clad, a metal flush mount back box with uh, an open gland hole in the bottom and a plastic socket front. So what would you code that? And again, the picture will be somewhere up there for it. And one of the other spares was for the boiler, and another one was for um, a socket upstairs that someone had added on the landing. <clears throat> so while there's no prospect of overloading the cable in, it's still not the best setup, and you know you kind of ram in that many conductors into the MCB that. You know, it's not it's not the greatest, and there's no sign of any thermal damage or anything. But the way the terminations are made throughout this consumer unit are the greatest. So again, have a look at the picture, see what you think. There was a pendant that had some basic insulation on show. Typical problem you'll find on an ECR where the flex has just popped out the grips or been stretched from a heavy lampshade or something. So that's up there. What would you code that one? And um, well, another one from Wills Electric actually. He had this on one of his ECRs the other day, where the socket was mounted quite close to the floor. This one, it's mounted close to a worktop. Now there is a socket in it, and I'll pop the picture up here, you can see it. So if you were gonna code this, what would you code it and why? Um, you know, as, a, as an estimate, there's about 20 mil between the bottom of the socket and the worktop. So there's that one. I'm just kind of scanning through these pictures now to see if I can see anything else. I'll sh put a picture up of under the stairs as well. You can see how the cables were clipped direct. Uh, the bonding was all fine. Um, oh, there was a junction box under a kitchen cabinet, so a picture for that one there. It might not be clear on the picture, but the, the hole is quite a uh, hole, but the opening where the cable's been brought in was quite big, so you can see that one. And uh, yeah, other than that, it was a tidyish install for a rental property. There was nothing um, particularly horrific about it. At least we've got RCD protection there on every circuit. Um, it was in good order. The accessories around the place were fine. Couldn't get loads of pictures because obviously this is someone's home so I was just trying to get close-ups of some of the stuff in there just electrical based so we can have a little chat about it on this video and yeah I mentioned we did the ICR on the one next door so the one next door was a, a new rewire maybe five years ago and um, the head was TNCS and um, if you look at the, the head on this one it looks like a recent bit of work so it's one of the grey heads and next door it's it's a black or older one so I'm not quite sure exactly what's gone on there with the DNA to be honest on you know why they've got one set up like that and one set up like the other I know um, it could be a different feed down this street they're not all off the same um, cable there's a, a car park the other side and a row of houses the other side you, you don't know what they've done in the street leading up to each property um, but it is interesting so see what you think in the comments to that I've got my own opinions on why it's like that and um, you know the, the possible changes that might have been made so see what you guys think and girls and yeah other than that thanks for watching this video i hope you all enjoyed apprentice week this is my last 12 hours in my 30s now to be honest um i'm normally quite excited about my birthday but for some reason because it's 40 and everyone's been making a big deal out of it it's put me off a little bit <laughs> so yeah it just shouldn't really make any difference should it it's just another year we're all just you know day to day we've as humans kind of invent these anniversaries of birth. Um, so yeah, 40 years old in the morning. Let's see if I can produce some more interesting content in my 40s and get a few more uh, subscribers and build this channel. Fingers crossed and um, hope you enjoy the live tonight. I'm going to get tidied up so it doesn't look like a tip while I'm on YouTube live later. Uh, I might find some of my tools that are missing as well because they all seem to get slung everywhere. I'm the worst for doing that when I get in and it's cold and it wet like it has been, just sling everything in and get home to the warm. So I've got some tidying up to do now and uh, get this EICR written up as well. So obviously I filled the um, 
main part of the reporting on site but the observations I always like to sit down and think about rather than um, rushing, rushing them on site. So uh, yeah, I'm going to sit and go through the observation section and uh, schedule inspections now and get on with it. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Any comments are appreciated, good and bad. I'm always happy to chat with people and I'll try and reply to every single one. And have a brilliant week. See you all later.